Greetings everyone and welcome to the first episode of a tutorial series aimed to explain some of the tools you'll be able to use in Crazy Machines 3. In this first episode, we will be covering the machine editor, the canvas upon which you'll be able to paint your own Crazy Machines, whether to share with others or simply for your own enjoyment. From the main menu, simply click Create and select the level template you'd like to work with. You'll then be taken to the machine editor. Depending on the template you select, your world might be populated with objects already or be an empty space waiting for you to fill it with your own contraptions. You can toggle the scene between 2D and 3D using the buttons at the top, and you can move the camera around by holding down the right mouse button and moving the mouse. You can also change the direction of the camera by holding the middle mouse button while you move the mouse, and finally you can zoom the camera in and out by using the scroll wheel. Let's look at the machine editor itself. To the bottom right of the window, we have the catalogue button. This allows you to show or hide the parts catalogue. Here you'll be able to select parts for use in your machine. You can search through the available parts using the filter options along the side of the catalogue panel, or using the text filter at the top. Additionally, you can search for parts and download them from the Steam Workshop, or even create your own. However, we'll be covering creating your own parts in a later tutorial. Once you've found a part that you'd like to use, simply drag it from the catalogue into your machine. Additionally, should you like to modify the material of the part, then you can select the Material tab of the part catalogue and drag and drop the new material onto an existing part. This can drastically alter the properties of any part already in play, from changing their appearance, their weight, or even changing them into a holographic projection. This can be very useful if you have several instances of a basic part in your machine and want them to behave differently. Once you've placed a part into the playing area of your machine, you're free to position it or even increase or decrease its size. You can swiftly reposition a part by dragging it around the screen, though be aware that if the part should turn red and the rest of the machine become desaturated, this indicates that you've moved the part into an invalid position, likely intersecting another part of the machine or the floor. You'll need to move it to a new, valid location before you can test the machine. But it's worth noting that there is an important exception to this rule, and that comes in the case of static parts. Along the bottom of the window, the third button in the navigation list allows you to designate certain parts as static. Static elements can overlap each other or even intersect with the floor of the machine without any issue. There are two additional options available to you when it comes to positioning a part, rotation and scale. By clicking on any part, you will see an overlay that includes rotation controls on either side and a scale slider at the top. Simply click and drag the mouse on any of these buttons to rotate or increase or decrease the size of the part. It's worth noting that you can only rotate a part around a single axis. However, you can change which axis you're rotating around by changing the direction that you're looking at the part from, either side on or from the top. This will allow you to angle parts towards or away from the 2D plane. This is especially important if you intend to allow parts to move outside of the 2D plane. By default, parts are frozen to this plane. However, by clicking on the first button on the navigational list, you can toggle the part between being frozen to the 2D plane or having full 3D motion. Now that you know some simple ways to reposition and adjust the parts of your machine, let's take a look at the additional buttons on the navigation bar. We're already familiar with the first and third buttons, but what of the second? This button toggles the part as being used by the player to form their solution to your machine. Let me demonstrate using the ball. Right now, the ball is part of the machine itself and will always start in its current position. The player is unable to move the part in normal play. We can test this by clicking the test mode button. This allows us to experience the machine as the player would. As you can see, there isn't very much for the player to do just yet. However, if we click the gameplay usage button and then select the ball, then test the machine again, we'll see that the ball is now available for the player to place in the world as part of their solution. The fourth button is the colour button, and simply allows us to repaint a part, though be aware not all materials support being repainted. The fifth button simply allows us to delete a selected part. Alternatively, you can simply hit the delete key on your keyboard when the part is selected. Next, to the right of the test mode button, we have the signal wiring mode button. This allows us to see and rewire the various nodes in the machine. 
but wiring is outside the scope of this first tutorial episode, so we'll leave that for later. Finally, we have the undo, redo, and menu buttons. And they all do as the name suggests, allow you to undo or redo an edit, or return to the menu. Once you're satisfied with your machine, and have everything as you want it, you can click on the rightmost button, which opens the machine properties window. Here you can make several largely cosmetic changes to your machine before finalizing it. Along the top are four tabs, and starting with the second tab, the background tab, you can select from a number of predefined backdrops for your machine. The third tab is concerned with the skybox. Here you can not only select the type of sky, you can adjust its appearance using the density and fall off sliders, as well as rotating the position of the sun, or moon, which will in turn adjust the direction of lighting for your machine. The fourth tab allows you to apply a number of video filters to the machine to create varying effects and add atmosphere. But when you're ready, you can then enter the final information for your machine by selecting the first tab, the Machine Description tab. Here you can name your machine, give it a description, which should be used to explain the objective to the player, add tags to help players find the machine while searching, as well as take a screenshot to act as a thumbnail for your machine. Additionally, at the bottom of the Machine Description tab, you can find a checklist to help make sure that the machine has everything it needs. Though, be aware that this checklist only looks for some of the more obvious problems. It's always worth double-checking your machine yourself by testing it. Finally, once you're sure that everything is right, you can click on the Share button and upload your creation to the Steam Workshop, where other users will be able to download and play your level for themselves. And with that, we've come to the end of this tutorial on the Machine Editor. There's much more that can be done to make your machine stand out, from building custom parts to wiring your machines to create awesome effects. These more advanced topics, as well as an example machine, will be covered in other tutorials. But I hope you found this one enjoyable, and more importantly, have a good understanding of how to use the machine editor to set up your first machine. So until next time, take care.